Section 1.6, Absolute Value Equations. Section 1.6, Absolute Value Equations. So here we see absolute value of x is equal to, and I wrote positive a. So if we see the situation in a problem, absolute value of x equaling a positive number, a represents a positive number, it breaks down into two scenarios, x equivalent, the inside equivalent to a, and the inside equivalent to negative a. If you see the absolute value of x equaling a negative number, a negative a value, that is, there is no solution to this problem, do not solve it, it's considered an empty set. So in example one, it says solve the absolute value of x equal to five. So it's following scenario one, absolute values is equal to a positive number. So we have two situations that occur. x, which is on the inside, is equivalent to positive a. x, which is on the inside, equaling negative a. On b, notice it says absolute value of w minus two equaling 12. When you're looking at something like this, first isolate isolate your absolute value. So you're going to add 2 over first. Absolute value of w is equivalent to now 14. Now <clears throat> it's equaling a positive number, so it breaks down into two situations. w equaling positive 14, w equaling negative 14. When we look at c, it says the absolute value of p is equivalent to 0. Zero, there is no positive and negative value of zero, so your only solution is p equal to zero. When we look at d, it says absolute value of x equaling a negative six. Remember what I said originally. If it's equaling a negative number, it's an empty set, no solution. So since it's equaling negative six, this is an empty set, no solution. And here's how we know. Remember the rules of absolute values. The absolute value bars. Anything inside comes out positive. So if I had solved this and said x equal to negative, if I had done x equal to negative 6 and x equal to the opposite, which would be positive 6 in this instance, I stick negative 6 in, negative 6 came out as positive 6. Positive 6 is not equivalent to negative 6, so it does not work. Example 2. It says solve negative 2 times the absolute value bars of 2 fifths p plus 3 minus 7 equaling to negative 19. So let's go back to looking at this problem. Before we can start anything, we want to isolate your absolute value bars. But before we do that, we need to get rid of the negative 2 and the negative 7. The negative 2 is joined by multiplication here but the negative is joined by subtraction. So we need to move the negative seven first. So we're gonna add seven to the right side and slide everything else down. So negative two, absolute value bars, two fifths P plus three slides down. Equaling now, I'm short $19, but found seven, we are short 12. We're still completely not isolated yet. That negative two is still joined by multiplication here. So remember the opposite of multiplication is division. So we're gonna divide the left and right by negative two. So we come absolute value bars of 2 fifths p plus 3 equaling now negative 12 and negative 2 makes it positive 6. So if we refer back to earlier, we said that the absolute value of x equaling a positive value gave you two situations. So x equaling the a value and x equaling the negative of it. So in this situation, we write two equations. So you're going to see 2 fifths p plus 3 equaling positive 6 and then 2 fifths p plus three equaling the negative of it. So we have two scenarios. We wanna isolate the absolute, the fraction piece here. So we're gonna subtract the three over to both sides. So I'm gonna subtract three here, come two fifths P plus equaling a positive three. Subtract three again on the second equation. So you get two fifths P equaling a now negative nine. Notice that you have two fifths, and I know everyone hates fractions. So in order to get fra rid of fractions, multiply by what you see. So I see a five in the denominator for both of them. So I'm going to multiply the left side by five and the right side by five. And in doing so, the fives cancel each other out, leaving you with 2p equaling 3 and 5 make 15 and 1 you multiply. And then divide by 2. So p is equivalent to 15 halves. On the second one, again, the fives cancel out, leaving you with 2p equaling negative 9 and 5 multiplied by negative 45. 
again, divide by 2. So P is equal to negative 45 over 2. Example 3. It, now what happens when you have absolute values on both sides of the equal sign? So if you see absolute value of X equaling absolute value of A, A could be another equation, it could be a number. You're going to treat it as X equal to A and then X equal to negative times the parentheses of A. So this is how we're going to set it up. So we see the absolute value of 2W minus 3 equaling the absolute value of 5W plus 1. Absolute value bar equaling the absolute value bar. So we're going to do two equations. You can do 2W minus 3 equaling 5W plus 1. And then 2W minus 3 equaling negative. And in parentheses, we're going to stick 5W plus 1. Yes, you can go ahead and change the signs if you want to. I do this situation with the negative in parentheses in case of sign error. We're going to subtract 5W to the left. Remember, this is New Jersey. The equal sign is your George Washington Bridge. And the left side is New York. And we're crossing over. So your 2W minus the 5W, that's negative 3W. Negative 3 slides down. 5Ws have canceled out, leaving you with positive 1. Again, we're leaving New York. We were negative. We are adding you to New Jersey. So we see negative 3W equaling positive 4. Then divide by negative 3. So W is equivalent to negative four thirds. That is one solution. Remember, there's two equations. So the second equation, you first need to distribute that negative to get rid of it. So we become 2w minus 3 equaling negative 5w minus 1. We're going to add 5w over now. So we see 7w minus 3 equaling negative 1. Add 3 over. So 7w equals positive 2, and then divide by 7. So w is equal to 2 sevenths. So situation-wise, we have a negative 4 thirds. So w is equivalent to negative 4 thirds. w is equal to 2 sevenths. So you would usually use set builder Im implementation. So we're going to write negative 4 thirds first, 2 sevenths second. Reason being, remember, negative numbers, then your positive numbers. Think of order of operation, left to right, negative comes first, and then the positive values on a number line.